Hello, in this advanced learning series of ADS, we'll learn about AEL programming. In the first part, we'll just start with the introduction. The second part, we'll talk about automating ADS and also coding layout. In the third part, we'll also talk about measurement expressions, which are used in data display. So the structure for today's um, lesson would be uh, syntax of AEL programming. We'll do a few labs, for labs, uh, best practices when you're doing AEL programming. We'll also talk about programming, compiling, and debugging. So what is AEL? AEL is an application extension language that's primarily used in ADS or advanced design system. It's very similar to basic and Python. It's easily configurable, you can customize, and you can extend the capabilities of ADS. It's a full-fledged programming language, uh, which also has its own debugger. It has this rich set of built-in functions, libraries, functions for manipulating strings, mathematical operations, and for handling simple data structures like lists and arrays and matrices. So what are some of the areas that AEL is used for? AEL is used in the user interface for organizing palettes of components. It's used for coding the actual user interface for a particular uh, component or part. It's used for defining all the layout um, for a particular part. So most of the parts in ADS, especially microstrip and stripline, are all coded in AEL. Um, it can also be used in measurement expressions that are used in the data display window. And we'll talk about that in the last part. And you can also customize ADS user interface by adding your own AEL code. So what, what are some of the general AEL structures? Um, the supported values are long, double, string, boolean, and complex. Um, they are type independent. The variables are type independent. That means you declare a variable, and the value that's going to be stored in the variable is determined when you assign that variable. How do you load um, other AEL files is through this command called load. Which, has, which is very similar to the include command in C, C++. Um, one of the neat things with AEL is um, it supports some of the C syntax. Like for example, it has a switch case and default logic and control statement. Um, it has uh, support for arrays. And you can use the bracket operator to access um, any value from a list. One of the neat things with the AEL is it also has automatic garbage collection in the sense that you don't allocate memory and you don't deallocate memory. Um, the garbage collection mechanism um, deallocates memory when it's not required. Let's, um, in this lab, try out a few ADS syntax. So one of the easiest ways for trying out or learning AD AEL is um, using the command line, which can be launched from the tools menu. So go to the tools menu, click on command line, and you can then um, type in any value here. For example, you could type decal. So decal is for declaring a variable and i value equals one, and that's how we do that. Once we define this, then we can use this anywhere in that particular function. And if you want to find out the value of um, that particular variable, you can use this function called d underscore info, and say i val, and this will let us know what the value is stored by that variable i val. Um, you can also declare floating or double precision values by using this command right here. You can also do, define complex numbers by using this command right here using the polar function. 
Um, you can also define while and if statements or compound statements. You can define your own functions. <laughs> so one of this data type that's supported in AEL is something called as list. A list uh, by its name stores a value, uh, a list of values. It can be integers, it can be real numbers, it can be strings, or it can be a mix of integers, real numbers, and strings. For example, we could declare something like Decl L vals equals list one, two, three. And if you notice here, we are actually storing integers and strings and uh, double position numbers. And if you then use the dinfo function, you can then look at what L vals is. Um, so some of the common functions that are used with list are the list function, the nth function, which access the nth variable in a particular list, the append function for growing a list, the car and the CDR function. And then you can also delete a value, a particular value in the list using the delete underscore nth. And then you can also insert values in a list. You could try some of these uh, functionalities using the command line and learn how to use lists. The next data type is uh, matrices and arrays. Um, you can define matrix using these um, curly braces. For example, if I say decal ix equals one, two, three, four, uh, this is an array, and then you can add that. And if you want to do uh, two by two matrix, use curly brace operators and you can do a two by two matrix. Um, it's easy to um, operate on arrays and matrices, but just using, um, say for example, if you want to sub subtract two arrays, you just say MX minus MY, and then you get the results. You can also multiply each individual elements of the, of the matrix. You can do a two dimensional array. You can also do a single dimensional array. You can do an array of complex numbers right here. So, what are the so um, what are some of the recommended best practices? Um, use nomenclature um, if possible. So, in a long function or maybe um, a few hundred uh, lines of code, you know what the particular variable is storing. For example, if you want to use a count variable, you prepend it with i. So it indicates it's an integer. Um, if it's double, you in, in the, um, prepend it with um, D. So that means D average. If it's a string, use S. For character, use a C. And for pointers, use P. Or here, S file name would mean it's actually a string. And the name is file name, indicating that we are expecting the name of a file. The other thing that you can, when you're naming functions, is also use the name of the file, the name of the function, and then the purpose of the function. The, the reason being is that you want to have a unique name for your functions because any function that you define could overload an existing function. For example, if I write a function called nth, which is a function for accessing the nth value in a list, then it could actually overwrite the predefined nth function um, that's shipped with the AEL. So let's next talk about programming, compiling, and debugging. Here, um, you can use any of your favorite um, editor, like let's say Notepad++ for writing the code. Um, AEL, you can compile AEL from the command line to see if there are any syntax errors. And the way to do that is um, use this AEL executable right here, and the name of the AEL file, and the name of the ATF file. So the ATF file is an AEL tokenized function, which, a binary which is a binary representation of the AEL file. 
for example if you had to type that you need enter and if you don't see any warnings or errors that means um, the AEL file does not have any um, syntax errors so this is a way of um, coding AEL in an external um, editor and then you can use the AEL compile AEL comp func um, executable to check for syntax errors Um, this slide talks about how to start ADS from the command line. So you can load a, the AEL file using the load command, or you can actually load it when you start ADS using this particular syntax here called ADS minus M and the AEL uh, file name. And this will load AEL when ADS is actually launched. So debugging, um, you can use the old traditional method of putting f puts and fprintf statements, or you can use the AEL debugger. So for example, if you want to debug code, you can type f puts in in an exec in a, in a function, and then type that, and then um, if you don't have any uh, syntax errors, um, you should see the code being executed on the command line. This debug window command line is actually launched when you use the minus d daemon.log um, extension to the ADS executable. And you can actually change this from your shortcut properties when you launch ADS on the, on the Windows platform. You can also define your own function called print error or my print error or whatever you want to name that and then type that and then use this function wherever you want to include um, a, a printf statement. And um, this will then get printed on to the output uh, daemon.log or the output error log window. Um, you can also use the start debugger or the, the AEL debugger by using the start debugger function. This can be used anywhere in an AEL script or a code. Um, you can also um, use that by starting ADS in the debug AEL mode. Or you can actually start the debugger from the ADS command line, like right here. The next few slides, we'll actually discuss how to use the AEL debugger and maybe debug a particular function. So here in this case, I already have code in this file called mytest underscore debug underscore eg dot AEL. So this particular line actually loads that function into ADS. Next, uh, we're going to start the debugger by typing the start underscore debugger command from the command line with enter. So this launches the debugger. The third step is to click on break on function right here. And then type the function that you want to break. So in this particular case, we have a function called my test underscore test. So we're just going to type that. Hit enter. And then the fourth step, um, you continue to run, so run that. So this will pass the command back to the command line right here. And the command line, then we're going to test the function that you want to debug. Decal my return value equals my test underscore test. When you hit, hit that, you it passes the control back to the debugger and click OK. And it has loaded the AEL file that has this function called my test underscore test. Now you can actually start debugging by using any of these um, commands here. So let's say single step over. 
it's going to step over let's keep continuing that and then if you want to explore the value of the complex variable complex underscore r just hover the mouse over that particular variable and you will see the actual value you can then continue to step over or hit the run function to go to the end of the function and pass the control back to the ads command line so now if you want to see what this function my test function return you can then again use the de info command here and then um, see what the value is for example here see that try it one more time and then it shows that's the value 22 which is returned by the function so that concludes uh, introduction a very quick introduction to AEL how to code AEL some of the best practices when you're doing AEL programming and how to debug AEL um, this is just a brief introduction there's far more um, uh, important material to read in the ADS uh, section of the, the manual um, or you can also go to um, knowledge center and search for AEL. There's a lot of uh, examples that I ship. So that concludes part one. So in the next part, we'll talk about how to use AEL for coding um, layout function functions in um, in ADS.